Among the announcements Apple made at their SF event, the one likely to have the biggest impact on how you use your iPhone was probably the new 3D Touch on iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. The hardware feature, which is basically forced touch on steroids, allows the phone to sense multiple layers of touch interactions. After the Apple event, Matthew, Greg, and I discussed our impressions of 3D Touch in depth. So playing with the, the 3D Touch, mm -hmm. it's their new name for it, and, and I'm not sure, but it seems like it seems likely that they would update all of their branding to say, you know, refer to Force Touch in any form as 3D Touch. Mm -hmm. So like say on the, the watch. But they may make a differentiation there between the fact that 3D Touch senses three different levels mm -hmm. and Force Touch is really two. It's yeah. like a tap and then a press, right? Mm -hmm. Like a hard press. Whereas 3D Touch, you have tap, your sure normal tap, and you have a press and then you have a full push or whatever that third level of pressure is. Mm -hmm. And so they handle it in two separate ways on the phone itself. There's a, um, on the home screen or you're tapping on an app, that's yeah. called a quick action. And so there's just one level of press there. You just the second level beyond a tap. And if you firmly press on it, you get the quick actions and you can say, send, drop a pin wherever you are or mm -hmm. send your location to somebody on, on the Maps app. Or if it's the phone one, you can pick a, a favorite person to call really quickly. Uh, but inside apps, they have all three levels active. So you have tap, just, you know, I'm gonna open an email, right? Mm -hmm. Or I'm gonna tap on a link to launch it. But then you have what they call a, mm -hmm. a peak. That's what they peak. call it, a peak. So if you, tap on, if you tap firmly on a link, it's a peak. If you press all the way, it's what they call a pop. So for instance, if we cl click on a link uh, that, that's a Safari link, a web link, then it would open up a preview window showing you what you would see if you just tapped on the link to go to Safari. Mm -hmm. But if you press it all the way, it just launches Safari. Yeah. So you have sort of two levels of interaction there. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how third-party developers, which some apps like Instagram already work that way, mm -hmm. how they work it into their control schemes. Yeah. I really do hope that they limit it to, or most developers limit it to, you know, like bonus features, you know, like the extra stuff, the little the shortcuts that are just, it, it makes it nice for the power users. Because if it, if it becomes something that like, they start hiding essential features behind that stuff, it's gonna get really confusing for people like my mom, who still really hasn't figured out like left click versus right click. For me to have to be like, oh, you know, you're pushing it hard, but you need to push it harder. Right. She's just gonna say, I don't want this phone. It needs anymore. to be optional. Yeah. yeah. It can't be the core mechanic of which the way, you know, is, which is the way you interact with the app. Yeah. It needs to be an additional way, a, a quicker way, a more yeah. friendly way, but not necessarily the only way. Because mm -hmm. they'll, they'll run into problems pretty yeah. quick. It is a very cool new way for developers to use the data that they have about how people are actually using their apps. So for things like uh, with the with Google Maps for you know dropping a pin. Maybe they saw that people are using this a lot once they know about it, but it's kind of t tucked back deep in there. So maybe if they push that up like they're doing with Maps, uh, that, it's just such a brilliant way to use data in a new way. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. And it's completely different from the Apple Watch where like some of the features you can only access through Force Touch. Right. So they, they have to be kind of rethinking their philosophy on what they're, what they're using 3D Touch for. Because on MacBook and Apple Watch, I haven't been too impressed with it, but I think I yep. think it looks like it has, has some potential here. Yeah, my experience with it in person was that the it was calibrated well. Like it, it was easy to go from tap to press to push. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's going to be adopted well. So we'll see how it goes.